Good morning. I have given everybody permission to record. Please double check and make sure that you are able to record. And if you cannot, please let me know. Shannon, can you please let me know when you feel that everybody's in and we can get started? All right, Eric, we are live on Facebook. Thank you, Shannon. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to provide an update on the COVID vaccination distribution efforts in Lucas County. We are now approaching the third week of phase 1B vaccine distribution. I'm happy to see approximately 27,905 individuals or about 6.51% of the population in Lucas County has been vaccinated to date. So a great job, everybody. Starting this Monday, February 1st, those who are 70 years of age and older will be eligible to receive their COVID vaccine. Scheduling is now available for these appointments. As Governor DeWine announced, school personnel are also eligible to receive the vaccine starting next week. However, the rollout of vaccine for K through 12 educators is being coordinated at the state level. At this time, only these counties have been identified to receive vaccine next week. And as you can see, Lucas County is not listed. Schools and districts will communicate directly to their personnel as to how the vaccine distribution process will look in their respective school. In the early stages of COVID-19 vaccine distribution, doses will be available in limited supplies for specific critical populations as part of a phased approach. As supply increases, COVID-19 vaccines will be available to all who choose to be vaccinated. Please understand, vaccine supply continues to be very limited. And we ask for citizens to please continue to be patient We're trying to schedule an appointment. Other eligible 1B groups, 75, 80 plus, those with a disability and have a condition or disorder can still schedule an appointment as we continue through the remaining phase 1B weeks. Please, there appears to be a rumor out there that just because you are no longer in that age group that week that you cannot be vaccinated, that is not true. So please seek out those vaccines. Lucas County now has nine providers available to administer COVID vaccines, including Walgreens and CVS pharmacies. These providers are in addition to the area hospital locations, Kroger pharmacies, and health partners of Western Ohio. To schedule appointments, individuals may visit lucascountyhealth.com, call 211, or area office on aging, and they may assist with scheduling process. Shannon, could you please walk through our process? Sure. Thanks, Eric. As Eric had mentioned, individuals um, can schedule an appointment through various means, including the lucascountyhealth.com website, which is on your screen. If you scroll down to the middle of the page where you see the COVID-19 vial, it says Lucas County COVID vaccine scheduling, click on the green button, which will take you right to the scheduling page. The first green box vaccine scheduling for 70 plus is right where you'll want to be. And as you can see, it lists the timeline starting Monday, 70 and older are eligible for vaccine. But as we have announced, scheduling for um, the next week generally opens on the Thursday before. So if you scroll down, you can see um, some background information on scheduling, the form of identification that needs to be 
brought to the appointments um, that you can cancel or reschedule up to 48 hours in advance. Um, and then it also reminds you that if you are unable to do it through the website, you can certainly call United Way 211 or the area office on aging to assist with the scheduling process. Below that's the interactive map where you are able to type in your address and find the closest location. As you scroll down, you will see that um, Lucas County Hospitals are all listed where they have um, COVID vaccine locations available. Please remember that appointments are limited at this time due to the scarcity of our vaccine supply. New appointments are added on a weekly basis. Generally on Thursdays are when appointments are added for the next week. And we encourage people to continue to check back for additional openings or cancellations that may occur. If you do decide to utilize one of the hospital locations, you simply click on the name and it will take you to the next page where you are able to go in and actually schedule an appointment as you scroll down. It will ask some um, what appointment date and time are available. As you can see here, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, pick a time that's most convenient for you. Then it will ask some demographic or patient information. Make sure that you please put in the name of the person who's receiving the vaccine. And you can certainly put in your email address if you're helping someone fill this out, but make sure that the patient information is that person who's receiving the vaccine for the following week. And then as you work down, it'll ask some other questions. If you're 18 years of age or older, some more uh, demographic information. Um, it will not ask your social security number. So please do not worry about putting that in. You will be asked to supply that once you um, show up on site for your vaccine. So um, as you continue on and finish up all of the information, um, you complete your appointments and then it will pop up and provide confirmation details, the date, the time, the location, there's also a map. And then in addition, you will be receiving text message and email reminders leading up to the date of your appointments. Um, in the event you do not choose to utilize one of the hospital locations, there are other providers across the county, including CVS Pharmacy, who just recently came online. You can do so by calling them, by texting COVID to 287-898, or scheduling online, and there's a hot link that you can click on, and it will redirect you to the CVS website. Below that is Kroger Pharmacy. There's a number that you can call to schedule, or you may also do that online. Health Partners of Western Ohio has openings available as well. You just have to call and schedule. And then once an appointment is scheduled, they will tell you the location for the vaccine. And last, we have Walgreens Pharmacy with uh, five different locations. You can certainly call them directly or schedule online at the link. Eric, I'm gonna toss it back to you, thanks. And just one quick point. Um, for the audience. So when we have have it on the uh, the website that's that schedule is now available for the next 24 days or so, can you explain what that means? Do we not? Sure. Have Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, the way that the scheduling has been set up, it automatically defaults to where it says um, scheduling is not available until the end of February or end of March. Please know that is not the case. Appointments are updated on a weekly basis. Just because it states that they are not available through the end of February, March, uh, whatever month we may be in, that is not the case. And to please check back the next week on Thursday as new appointments are added. Thank you, Shannon, appreciate that. Relative to, to vaccinations, uh, we're increasing those provider listings. And uh, again, that, that's going to uh, bode well for the community. What bodes well too is not wasting doses. So these are precious at this point in time. Uh, we don't, again, we don't have a lot of them. It's very limited. So we do not want to waste doses. And Lucas County is committed to not wasting any doses. What does that mean? Well, uh, again, we're going to be, we're going to need a, uh, a list of individuals to, that we can call uh, when we have to immediately uh, get these doses into somebody's arms uh, before they go back. 
So we're going to create a, 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 a another standby list, if you would, or add to our standby list that we have right now. Uh, we're looking right now at utilizing 65 and older, K through 12 staff, and of course, those first responders. A waste dose can be extra vaccine in a vial uh, due to people not showing up or because of manufacturing or because of manufacturing the vaccine is very fragile and must be used up quickly in order to avoid expiration. So you have to make sure you show up for that second dose appointment for a number of reasons. A second dose appointment will be scheduled when you're receiving your first shot. Your second dose is earmarked for you and you alone. So you need to be there. We cannot guarantee um, that you would get that second dose uh, the next day or weeks to come because of limited supply. Your dose, your second dose is earmarked for you for, for your vaccination process. Protocols in place to ensure proper handling of the vaccine are in place as well too. These are significant. Uh, we talk about uh, time and temperature holding, uh, not being able to move vials. So uh, again, there are very strict things to handling the vaccine. And another reason why, uh, again, we could run into wasted doses and by having a standby list, we're not going, we're not going to have to worry about wasting any of those doses. So using all these tools available to help prevent the spread of the virus continues to be critical until a substantial number of Ohioans can be vaccinated. Continue where mask and social distance will, will reduce your, your chance of being exposed to or spreading the virus. Proper prevention me measures such as wearing that mask, washing your hands and practicing social distancing coupled with the vaccine will provide us the best protection from COVID-19. Please, you should continue to wear that mask and whenever you want, you should continue to wear the mask and practice social distancing and being vaccinated. While the vaccine should protect you from being sick with COVID-19, not enough is known about whether or not you can still carry the virus and spread it to others. At this time, those who get the vaccine should continue to wear that mask, practice social distancing, and again, washing your hands. So um, with that said, I'd like to open this up for questions from the media and those um, on the Zoom link. Amy Stagerwall with Channel 11, please go ahead and ask your question. Okay, um, so we have a, we asked viewers for a couple of questions that they had and one that we seem to be getting quite frequently. Um, when it comes to people who technically are high risk but aren't in the category yet for high risk, so maybe they have, I don't know, diabetes or something like that, um, what, are they want, going to be in a special category you know, after this phase 1B or are they gonna kind of be in with the general population or do we not know that at this point? Right, so um, again, uh, we're taking directions from the governor um, as that comes down specifically who's going to be vaccinated with what conditions, uh, we'll be able to roll that out. But I don't think enough is known yet exactly how that's going to play out over the next couple of weeks. Okay, um, and then another one, people, you know, obviously we know the doses are very limited and people are having scheduling conflicts, issues, whatnot, but someone who does get that first appointment, someone who does receive the first dose of the vaccine, um, will they have trouble, you know, scheduling their second appointment? Um, we're, we're worried people, you know, people are worried that they're, they're gonna get one and then they're not gonna be able to schedule their second appointment to get that second dose. How is it ensured that that happens? So th there's, th there's no trouble whatsoever. So if you've gotten that first dose, um, let's say at a hospital or rec center, that second dose, uh, it's that second dose is gonna be there. Um, so your, your first dose appointment slots you into that second dose appointment, whether it's 21 or 28 days later. Melissa Vage with Channel 13, please go ahead and ask your question. Yes, good morning. Um, we have, we're getting quite a bit of feedback from folks and I don't know that this is under the health department's control or whatever, but they will, people who call as opposed to making their appointment online are running into the problem where they're almost double booking appointments at some of these locations. In other words, if they call and make an appointment, get a confirmation number, they go show up and they say, well, you're not on our list. There seems to be, you know, just a cascading amount of problems with people trying to sign up. Um, if they don't get an appointment right away, um, how often should they check back? You can see where I'm talking about. It's becoming very difficult for people to track down an appointment. Can you address that? 
Yeah, uh, just a couple of things, please. Uh, don't double book appointments. Uh, as, as soon as, uh, if you're eligible and as soon as you get your appointment, that that is locked in for you. Uh, we've had had some concerns where you know people book an appointment but they're not eligible. So we do try to comb through that list, uh, at least the list that we're responsible for, which is uh, again with the hospitals and, and of course uh, the health department vaccination process. Uh, so uh, again, don't double book. Uh, the unfortunate thing right now is that our appointments fill up so quick. Uh, last week when we opened them up, um, the one site, uh, by the time I, I got off the um, off of the Zoom call and, and walked back in, we were almost booked for, for that site. So again, they fill up extremely quick. Uh, you know, I don't know if, um, you know, Kroger's is having the issues and now CVS and Walgreens as they come on board. Uh, we're just offering their information so that it makes it easy for our community to make sure that they can get to those sites and if they have vaccine, uh, again, it, hopefully it knocks down at least one of the barriers to actually getting in and getting your vaccine. I think as a follow-up to that, it's not the people that are double booking appointments in some of the facilities. Um, it, there seems to be a lot of confusion and there seems to be a trouble coordinating some of these to which um, I'm not sure there's an answer, but can you address that? Well, uh, do you know, uh, again, is this Kroger's or someplace else or is this- Kroger. Kroger. Okay. Oh, that then I definitely have. Uh, again, uh, that's Kroger's issue. I have no control over that. Um, the the control that we have, if you if you would think of it this way, are the hospitals that we've partnered with. Um, Kroger's has not partnered with us to actually help help do their scheduling. Um, so again, they're they're kind of an entity on their own. Okay, and just one more quick follow up. As far as the reserve list is concerned, walk people through the process. How do I sign up for that? How do I get on that list, etc. Sure. As, as we move over the next few weeks, uh, we know that we're going to need uh, additional people to help with that waste list. So what we've done is not create a, another process that the community is going to have to go through. So if you've been on that pre-registration notification list, we started several weeks ago, uh, helps us notify you when, when your vaccine um, is going, or your vaccine group is going to be uh, opened up. Uh, but we're also going to be using that same list, which has, I think, um, well over 30,000 individuals who would you know, be in the, the standby list. We're gonna be utilizing that uh, then to help with, uh, help offset those, those, those need for um, individuals to go for those wasted doses or potential wasted doses. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, Bree with Channel 24, go ahead and ask your question. Thank you, hi Eric, how are you? Good, how about you? Awesome, thank you. Um, have we used, speaking of the standby list, um, has that been utilized yet? Has there been an instance, uh, you know, where they had to go through that and how does that process work? Yeah, you know, uh, again, we've had had to use it. Um, you, you know, when we started this, I told the community that we're going to monitor it and to see how it, it works. Um, and, and again, we, we want to make sure that we continue to give the best process to change the system around uh, to make sure that we knock down barriers. So we have used it. Um, and it varies. You know, we've had uh, police officers, we've had volunteers who are at, uh, who, who actually volunteer for pods. Um, it, it varies, but we do know that, uh, again, we need to open this up a little bit more, uh, continue with the process that we're using, uh, just to make sure that we never have an issue with uh, a wasted dose because we, we didn't have a volunteer who wanted to get their dose earlier before their, their tier group opened or somebody who, um, again, it might be uh, somebody who is uh, in a tier group but just can't find a, an open spot that we might be able to call. Do you know about how many um, people on that waste list have received a dose? I think we're, we're over probably 100 right now. I can get you an exact number um, of individuals who we had to use from that waste dose for that weight or for that standby list, let's call it that, for that standby list. Uh, which uh, again, you know, as many clinics or points of dispensing or clinics were running, um, it's a little bit higher than I, than I thought it would be. Uh, but again, uh, it, it all depends on which dose, which, excuse me, would manufacture whether it's Pfizer or Moderna, uh, because Pfizer is a, a little bit trickier to, to, to use and, and to, uh, again, make sure that you don't have waste doses. Moderna is a little bit easier. Uh, so uh, again, we're, we're learning how to, again, operate with Pfizer and Moderna at our clinics, how we make sure we don't have waste doses. And we, all, we have this fallback system. Gotcha. And then just one last question, if you don't mind, um, what will the schedule look like for those uh, school personnel vaccinations once they do come to Northwest Ohio? You know, is that going to be on a Friday, kind of like what they're trying to do in Wood County, or do you have any idea of what that would look like? Well, uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, we're 
We're supposed to get information tomorrow about the number of vaccines we're going to have in our community, uh, about providers. Uh, we're, we're working a couple different channels here. Uh, we're talking with uh, some of the major providers out there for the schools and their vaccines. Uh, we're also then going to be talking to schools and figure out the best way to make sure that we get these vaccines to them. Uh, we can't do this in a vacuum. The, the important thing, again, is to make sure that, you know, we get the vaccine into arms as quick as we can, but also understand that there's some, um, there's some concerns or, or things that we need to deal with in the schools that they, that they have to let us know how to best handle that, uh, such as, you know, is a, is a Friday better to actually get vaccinated so they have Saturday and Sunday if they have a sore arm um, or a little bit of a headache that, you know, we, we, don't, we don't have that going into the schools uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. So, again, we'll be working on the process with them. Awesome, thank you so much. Sure. No problem. Brooks with the blade, please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hey Eric, how's it going? Uh, just a question on the school vaccination list. Has the state given you any kind of explanation as to what that what goes into that process? I think a lot of folks in the community would be curious as to why a county like Allen with far less uh, cases would have 26 schools on that list and, and a county like Lucas would, would have none on that list. You know, that, that's a great question and, and again, I think with the answer we get from our, our state officials, and it makes sense, there's limited supplies, um, you know, or excuse me, there's limited vaccines, uh, you know, we're, we're having to, again, do these age groups and now K through 12. Uh, so again, how, how do we make this all mesh? So you, you can imagine the, the planning behind the scenes. So again, I don't know the exact process they're using, but if I was a planner down in state, I'd be looking at, okay, can I take a smaller county and do that now? And then, you know, next week I could do a larger county with more vaccines because I've already taken care of one county. So I, I would imagine those things are being taken care of and, and asked down in Columbus. All, all I know is that um, we're working with our schools to make sure that they're on the list, that they're going to get vaccine, um, and, and that we can get kids and staff and students um, back into school uh, safely. All right, um, Andrew with Channel 11, please go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Eric, another school related question. Um, I'm wondering if you can just explain how Notre Dame Academy was able to get vaccine. Um, there, there, there was definitely some frustration with some school districts we spoke to about how they were able to get it when everyone else was sort of left out of the, out of the cold. You know, I have no idea. Um, I, I don't know if that goes against the priority list that the governor has set up. Uh, I don't know how they got the vaccine. Uh, that that is that is well beyond me. Uh, I have uh, I've had uh, slight discussions with uh, a liaison from the governor's office um, as well as uh, ODH. Uh, so they're they're trying to uh, again figure out how that actually happened. Um, but again, you know, I, I hate to say this, but uh, again we got people vaccinated and I, I know I don't want to hear that in, in the sense that somebody made a jump the line but we got people vaccinated and again every vaccine in an arm of a Lucas County residence is a win for our county win for state and of course win for all of us in the United States so uh, we all have to take a deep breath and understand that happened but we need to figure out why and so that was my question that I posed to state yesterday thank you Sean with channel 13, please go ahead and ask your question. Eric, good morning. Uh, and Andy, you got a little bit of my question in there. So um, if Notre Dame is able to get this vaccine, does that mean other schools can go out and on their own? I mean, is this creating some sort of market for vaccine that, that was not intended to be there? You know, I, I hope not because again, um, where are we taking the vaccine from? You know, whether we like what the governor and ODH has put forth, um, there, there is a plan in place. Uh, you know, again, we need to take care of those individuals that are most susceptible to this disease. And that is our, our elderly, uh, our elderly community. And we're trying to do that. So uh, again, my concern is, you know, did we take vaccines away from the elderly community? Uh, we have a process in place. We should follow it because uh, again, if you don't have a plan in place to, and you don't work that plan, you're gonna end up with issues at the end. Um, again. I don't, I don't think any of us like the plan that, that's set forth in front of us in totality, but it's, it's, it's some, it, it's, it is well thought out um, and it has some, some logical reasons why we're doing it the way we are. 
So in speaking with the diocese today, they sent me this, this survey that they were given that said mm -hmm. key things to know. And one of the points is that school districts may choose their own community partner. So is that giving an, an okay per se for districts to just go find, you know, whatever facility had some leftover or anything like that, and they can just make their own arrangements? You know, again, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to speak for, for, for any one school system at this point in time, uh, like Notre Dame. Uh, what, what I do know the process is, is that schools are, are surveyed. How many vaccines do you need? Uh, you pick a provider, whether it's the health department, the hospitals, um, again, they, they have, uh, I think Kroger's and, and Myers are also partners. And they say set that down on paper. I know that I have uh, a number of schools that have chosen me a provider. Uh, I, I think Mercy and ProMedica also have uh, a couple that are have chosen them as well. So, um, you know, again, it's the process that we have, and we we have to conform to that process. So, I, I do know tomorrow we'll 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 find out exactly how many doses we're going to be getting. Hopefully, it comes in tomorrow. Uh, how many doses we're going to be getting. Uh, and then we can quickly uh, pivot and, and make a plan to figure out how to get those doses in arm as fast as possible. Amy with Channel 11, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, one follow up to that, speaking of doses, um, for the hospitals and for the health department, based off you know the past two weeks and then next week, yeah. on average, I guess, how many doses do you guys get to distribute every week? You know, for the past couple of weeks, uh, I'll just let me just mention hospitals and health departments. We've had uh, a little bit over 4,000 that we've been able to distribute. Uh, we've had 6,000 total in the community, give or take a couple a couple doses there over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this week in totality, it looks like uh, we have a little bit over 5,000. So let's say that the community is you know, less about a thousand doses. Uh, so again, uh, this is this is the process. You have a limited supply. It's it's finite, uh, and so you have to figure out how to make this all work. So we're we're looking at K through 12. We just talked about it. So you know you have to again take doses somewhere to be able to give that to K through 12. The the good thing is that doses are stable um, over the next couple of weeks from what we're hearing from um, from uh, both the governor and ODH. What does that mean? You have some ability to plan a little bit, which helps us out. So we know that, uh, again, we're going to get um, similar amount of doses over the next couple of weeks. Okay, and then um, you were talking earlier about people who, you know, book appointments and ultimately aren't eligible. How often would you say you guys kind of have to go back through the system and tell someone, you know, hey, you're, you're not in this group and then appointments, you know, become available? Well, uh, again, um, we go through the system daily. So uh, again, we have, we have a number of staff who are, are trying to look at the, the criteria that we have. Uh, um, and then we go ahead and, and, and let them know that uh, you don't meet the eligibility requirement. Um, and then you know, we'll, we'll say, you know, please you know, come back when you are eligible. We have cancellations daily. And that's why we keep on saying you, you need to come back and, and visit some of these sites uh, to, to see if there's a, an, open, uh, an open appointment. Um, you know, it, it varies. Um, you know, I, I think uh, one of the days we had, uh, I think 40, 40 plus individuals that we, we've had to, again, take off the, take off the list. Uh, we've had other days where, you know, it's, it's been 10 or less. So it, it all depends on what day it is. Uh, but again, we go through it. Uh, we go through it on a routine basis. Because again, the, these appointments are precious, but the vaccine is more precious. So we want to make sure, again, that, we, that we're matching up that vaccine with the, the population that needs it the most. Brooks, go ahead and ask your question, please. Yeah, Amy asked a, a similar question earlier, but specific to the the folks, uh, say like law enforcement, who receive a, a shot as to as to not go to waste. They 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 had an extra one and they receive a shot. Is there a plan for like those law enforcement folks to ensure that they get a, a second shot, even though it was kind of they had the first one happen unexpectedly? Yeah, no. Um, anybody, whether you're your your first responder, law enforcement, you're 65 and older. Uh, your K through 12 who are going to be, you know, on that standby list. If you get that first dose, your second dose will be there. Uh, uh, again, that's important to understand. You, you, anybody who's gotten their first dose, anybody at all, your second dose is sitting there waiting for you 21, 28 days later. Free, go ahead and ask your question, please. 
Thank you. I just have a, another question. How much of the, the first group have already received their vaccine doses? Um, you know, either the healthcare providers or that AD and up. Um, what are we looking like for the, um, I guess, the completion for that? So, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, again, I don't, I don't want to be too, uh, too, too weakish on, on the statement. So bear with me. You know, we don't know how many 1A individuals are out there. Uh, we, we guess, you know, we, we think for our responsibility, uh, health department, you know, we had about, let's say 6,000, 10,000 individuals out there. That would be our responsibility. So uh, again, this is why we keep on saying, okay, we have a clinic open for 1A individuals. We have a clinic open for 1A individuals. Please come out, come out. So we continue to ask that. And as we went through over the last couple of weeks, we've gotten less and less 1A individuals. So we're pretty confident now. Again, those individuals who wanted to be vaccinated, who were in the 1A category, we could probably start moving on to say, you know, 1A is done for right now. So we can start focusing in our efforts on 1B, much like the hospitals are doing right now. So again, number wise, it, it, we got to be pretty happy with what we have so far, because again, every every vaccine that we've had in the community so far has went into an arm. That's twenty seven thousand, so that's pretty good. But you got to remember too, I, I wish I could manage all the data, but we don't. We have to rely on the Howard Department of Health uh, to to again feed us that data. And uh, again, when when we get the demographics and data from them, we can then start planning. Um, but the problem is we. We don't always get that data in a timely manner. Gotcha, thank you. Sure. Okay, last question. Melissa with Channel 13, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I have a follow-up. Eric, let, I wanna be pretty specific on this so that to clear up confusion here. Say I work for, I'm a teacher for Toledo Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And then of course, we've got the private schools. So say Toledo, I don't know, I would assume they're signed up through the health department to get their vaccines for their teachers. Uh, we don't know exactly who is. Uh, okay. up. So, so do it once now that you've opened it up to 70 plus and teachers, do I as a teacher go online and see if I can get an appointment or do I wait for my school district to tell me we have we have you have to sign up through a, a separate link? Yeah. So, uh, again, that's a great question. Let's clear that up. So what we're talking about K through 12 right now is that you're on our standby list. So if we have, let's call it an emergency and we got to get that vaccine into an arm, they have the possibility of being contacted to see if they want to receive that vaccine. So that's one process. The other process is the, let's call it the overall vaccination of our K through 12 staff and teachers. That's going to start happening hopefully next week in Lucas County. They, the, the, their administration should already have been getting lists together of those essential teachers and staff that need to get vaccinated. That number has went down to Columbus. They're trying to figure out how many doses we should receive as a full county with all our providers to be able to vaccinate those individuals. So two separate things. One is a, that standby list. And then the second thing is that it's the process that the schools have already been working on the last couple of weeks to make sure they have contact with their employees who are going to get vaccinated. Well, all we need to do now next week is figure out exactly what time and where, bring us your, your students, or excuse me, your staff and your teachers, and we'll go ahead and, and get them vaccinated. Okay. Mel, did that help, Mel? Did that clear that up, I hope? Again, two problems. Yeah, yeah, it did. So I don't have to go online and do it. My school district will contact me. Correct, correct. Okay, thanks. Okay, hey, that concludes the questions. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time.